This week on Melted Reality, we take an unintentional pun and create a Star Wars Force perspective diorama. Let's get going. So I had these mini Bandai Millennium Falcon Star Destroyer kits for ages and had been kept in just these little display cases. I also had this TIE Fighter set and I wanted to put all three together into something special. These small Bandai kits are pretty cheap, they're sort of 10 to $15 and they're excellent quality and detail. The roll at a scale though, which is where the idea of a force perspective model came, comes in. And I'll be using this wood frame as a base and here I'm just testing the rough placement with the largest model at the back and the smallest at the front. And I'm pretty happy with this arrangement. Moving on, I still need to assemble the TIE Fighter, but I won't be using the stickers, but I do need to clip out these remaining pieces. Again, these Bandai kits are great quality and they don't even need any glue, they just press fit together and held, and held great. Except mine's a little bit weird and has this seam at the bottom. There may be something I needed to sand down, but now that it's together, uh, it was going to take a bit too much force to pull apart and I didn't want to risk damaging the small ship. So I left it as is. And it's only going to be at the bottom and no one will see it anyway. Now that it's assembled it's ready to paint. But I need to perform some minor surgery on my airbrush needle. Uh, I've dropped it at some point and bent the tip and that causes the paint to spray in random directions. But I think I can safely uh, lightly sand it off. And success, he's gonna make it. To prime, we'll use a couple of coats of Vallejo Black Primer, uh, and a little too much thinner. Followed by uh, a roughly even mix of these scale 75 colors, again with too much water. The blue gray is much darker in person, so I applied some of the pure gray to the center of some of the panels. Doing it this way helps to pick out some of the larger features and retain the shadows and the seams. And you can see that looks pretty great. For the windows I used to me a flat black just to rough in the base color. But then I follow up with this panel liner. The panel liner does two things. One it tidies up the edges because it flows into, into all the recesses. But it also leaves a nice gloss finish that you'll see later on in the video. It really helps sell the effect that this is glass or a window of some description. And here she is all complete. Next is the base, which is the wood frame, and we put a bit of black cardboard on top. I cut the cardboard a bit wider than the wood, and about twice as long, and you'll see why in a second. I cut a taper from the front to about halfway down so that it converges at the back, and it helps to sell the force perspective effect. It's a bit hard to see here on camera until I do this. A big part of this diorama is going to be adding lasers, shooting from the Millennium Falcon at the TIE Fighter. Uh, I thought I had shorter LED filaments, but they're all pretty long and they're not going to work in this instance. And after a bit more surgery, I extracted these little guys from the globe. Uh, but I couldn't get them powered in the end. I suspect that they want a higher voltage than my power supply outputs, so it was a bit of a bust. So Boiler, hit me up in the comments let me know what power supply you're using. But pushing forward, it was time just for one final round of surgery, and this time it was proctology. The solution I came up with was to put UV resin inside uh, some clear tubes with the red LEDs attached to the back. I had to find something that was consistent, that I can use multiple times, and that I didn't mind destroying. Straws would have been perfect, but what I ended up using were these paint droppers, because I had a bunch of them and I didn't feel like making another trip to the dollar store this week, as much as I love that place. The result's a little bigger than I would have wanted, but they work pretty great. It's pretty, 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 pretty good. It's a little hard to see the red goal on camera, but trust me that they really pop in person. Finally, I need to make the mounting points for the models, and I'll cut up this wire coat hanger. First though, I glued the cardboard to the base. Annoyingly, my wood glue's starting to go bad, but I didn't need much and the wire is going to help keep the paper in place anyway. And once dry, I mark out the rough placement of where the models are going to go, then use my wow stick to drill through.
There's a little bit of back and forward deciding on the exact height and angle for the wires for each model. And adding the mounting nubs to the wire was a bit of a journey. I tried super glue and UV resin, but none were very secure. And in the end, it was just hot glue that worked. And also a neat and precise application of hot glue to the bottom holds the uh, wire in place. With the stands finally in place, I paint everything black. At the last minute, I also apply some Tamiya clear red coat to the lasers, so that even when the LEDs are off, they still read as red. And finally, time to put it all together. I play around a bit with the positions and orientations just to really, really get the best perspective effect I can, and I found that putting these two bits of cardboard on the sides also help with the depth. And I'm happy to call it done. Thanks everyone for watching to the end. Let us know in the comments if you've ever built one of these Bandai kits, and which one's your favorite. And let me know if there's any other ideas for force perspective uh, dioramas I could make. And thanks, I'll see you in the next one.